This story starts out amazing, and my friend rescued eight Barbori seahorses who looked very thin and weak from a local shop. As soon as she got them into her tank, she noticed that their gills were a tad red and that while they went after food, they seemed unable to actually eat it. This is called weak snick, and it means that the seahorse's trigger is not working properly, so when they try to suck up food, they just can't. Weak snick is said to be caused by nutritional deficiencies, an injury, or an infection or parasites affecting the hyoid bone's trigger mechanism. We learned in previous videos that the way a seahorse eats involves the muscles around the hyoid bone pulling it back and creating that trigger action and suction which pulls food in. When the muscles or the hyoid bone itself are injured, the seahorse is unable to eat. We can avoid weak snick in our tanks by keeping the seahorse's tank very clean, the organics load low, keeping it parasite free, and enriching foods with Selco, Vibrance, Astaxanthin, or other dance feed type supplements which enrich the foods. However, in this case, the rescued ponies were already in trouble. So when we realize that a seahorse has weak snick, the first thing we have to do is figure out why. Looking for other symptoms can help us a lot. If the seahorse does not have rapid breathing or is not flicking against our other objects, then we first need to look at nutritional deficiencies or an injury. When a seahorse goes to suck up its food, it can sometimes suck in a piece of gravel or shell or some other foreign object. While the seahorse can typically expel that foreign object, as he clears it, it irritates or strains the hyoid muscle. It basically gives him a sore throat so that the next time he goes to eat, it hurts and he doesn't want to. If that's the case, we can do many things such as introducing soft body prey like adult live brine shrimp or secluding the pony to eat in private and keeping the tank very clean in order to help him heal. If those things don't work, the next step is to try to hand feed. One method of hand feeding shown here involves letting the seahorse hitch on your pinky, pinky finger turning it sideways and almost at an upside down angle and then using very very finely mushed food including vitamins or enrichment and just blowing the food into the seahorse's mouth always giving it a chance to breathe another method called force feeding involves using one to two milliliters of mashed food and inserting a syringe or catheter no further than the trigger bone. This is meant for experienced seahorse owners and I do not advise anyone who is not familiar with the process and doesn't really research it to try. It can save a seahorse's life so if the seahorse is literally not eating then I'll put some links below that will describe this method further. With any of the force feeding or hand feeding methods, you can tell by the amount of poop if they're actually getting food. If you happen to see thrashing or itching as shown in this video, you can be pretty darn sure that the weak snick was caused by parasites. Now we're going to go over the most common method to help a seahorse with weak snick due to parasites. All of this information will be listed below and links provided, but formalin is the method used. Let's hear from Briley. I have four seahorses in this bucket with 30% formalin in five liters uh, with an airline. Would like a uh, little hitching post in there but I didn't have anything small enough. Um, in this one I've got five seahorses in the same percentage. Five litres with an airline and a hitching post. Um, I give them the bath for 45 minutes which is the maximum time. I don't really want to leave them in there for any longer than that, but they do really well. They just cruise around. So 
sometimes they may thrash, but I haven't had one do that to me yet. The reason I like to um, only do five litres of water is because I only have a short glove on. So when it comes time to pulling them out, if I had too much water in there, I would get the formalin on my skin, which you don't want to do. But hopefully this um, helps them get better and I will do another formalin bath in a week just to try and make sure that we've got all those parasites that are causing the problem. As in any rescue mission, sometimes the seahorses are too far gone to be saved. It makes me so sad that this seahorse could have been saved from death if it had just been properly cared for in the beginning. Luckily for some of these seahorses, because of Briley's care and formal treatment, they were able to get rid of the parasites and start eating like normal seahorses again. While we watch these guys eat, which is just magical to me, I'm going to go over a few other facts about formalin. As Briley stated, you need to wear gloves because formalin is very dangerous to us humans. Don't get it on your hands or anywhere else. But formalin also has a limited shelf life and it becomes very toxic even to seahorses if it's outdated. Make sure to buy formalin in a bottle that's see-through so that you can tell if there is precipitate or white particles at the bottom of the bottle. If there are any type of particles, throw it out. It means it's expired. Most of the formalin that we can buy at the stores is a 37% solution of formaldehyde and water. It can treat external parasites, fungal lesions, and reduce swelling. There are a couple of different methods in which to use, but always follow the directions on the bottle. I'll link a few things below, but basically, long-term treatment in a quarantine tank involves three treatments of 15 to 25 milligrams per liter or 15 milligrams per 10 gallons. A short-term bath would be 250 milliliter, milligrams per liter, meaning one milliliter per one gallon, and that lasts about 45 minutes to one hour. But again, always follow the directions on the bottle to make sure that you're using the right percentages and so on and so forth. So now we know that if we realize our seahorse has weak snake, once we figure out why, we can treat. If it's nutritional deficiencies or an injury, the seahorse needs clean water, time to heal, softer foods, and possible hand feeding or force feeding. Once we get them eating again, please be sure to enrich your foods with an enrichment that contains high amino acids, high unsaturated fatty acids, huffa, vitamins, or beta-glucan, which is good for immune system. If it is indeed parasites, the formalin treatment will work to get rid of those parasites in their gills and throat. However, as Briley soon found, if you add them back to a tank with contains, which contains other fish that might still have the parasites, they can be reinfected. So either treat every single fish or it's time for a new tank. <laughs>